having a fab morning this morning i love the loop show as you know i want to audition for it i think i'd be a fab addition to jamie and ricky on the loop show i'm not gonna lie but this morning we've got our last episode of shine your light oh, i love that little song in the middle i've been singing it all week uh, and the verse that we've been looking at for this uh, series is Matthew 5, 14 to 16. And it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. If, uh, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out uh, for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So today's focus is on shiny respect. Uh, and there's a Bible plan that's about shiny influence. Go read it. I hope you have a fantastic morning and I'll see you next week. Bye. guys ever seen a little kid raise their hands up to their dad 
They do it because they need their dad, because they want to be close to him. And I'm sure you've seen people do that in worship. I mean, we do it all the time. We do it because we know that we need God and because we want to be closer to God. Now, maybe you've never raised your hands in worship before. Maybe you have. Either way, I want to invite you as we sing together, if you want to feel close to God, if you want to show God how much you need Him, raise your hands in worship. Not because I'm asking you to, not because other people are doing it, but because you know that you need God and you want to be closer to Him. So come on, let's worship. Tell us what to do. Yeah, we do what we want, when we want. Lay off. You're not the boss of us. Yeah, you're not the boss of us. Guys, just say the opener. 
Sure thing, no problem. Okay. Hang, Hang on, on for the loop! Three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Do you ever get tired of people telling you what to do? Does it seem like everybody has a plan for your life? It can be really hard to respect what other people want you to do when you really think that you know better. Speaking of, Jamie, on a scale of one to 10, where are you at with uh, authority? I mean, I would say that I'm probably a nine, if that's like, I really listen to authority because I'm really scared of getting in trouble. I am a rule follower to the T. I'd say I'm somewhere kind of in the middle. I'd say like a six or seven, because I am a textbook people pleaser. So like growing up anytime, like I had to clean my room, I never really wanted to, um, just because I didn't see the point of doing it because it's just like, well, it's my room. Well, let's talk to somebody who knows something about breaking rules. Quiz man. You gotta fight for your right. The quiz thing! Look at this endless void. Look at this. It just goes on and on forever and ever. Here, watch this. I'll show you. It just goes on and... Well, of course there's a wall there. Of course there's some physical limits. What is this, an open world video game? Flawless segue. In video games, open world games give players an opportunity to wander around without a quest. You wanna sit down at a table and eat a full box of cereal for an hour? You can. You wanna wash your hair with glue? Do it. You wanna walk straight into a wall for an hour? Check that controller, it's probably busted. Nobody knows exactly for sure which game was the first open world video game, but which one of these games was considered one of the first? Was it A, GTA 3, B, The Legend of Zelda, C, Wasteland, or D, Ultima? If you said B, go back to your last save point and try again. It's actually D. Ultima was a computer game made in 1981, and it was so open world that it gave you the opportunity to dungeon crawl and do space travel. Dungeon crawling and space travel? That's what we call Friday night at the Quizman household. Some people love endless possibilities, and then some people really want the rules and authority. Some people are like, just give me some rules. Give me a quest. Give me something to do. You want me to take these dragon eggs to the moon? That sounds fantastic to me. What does Thursday sound like? Thursday is when I will take the dragon eggs to the moon. Because some people thrive with independence and some people need more rules. William Golding explored this idea in a book about a bunch of middle school boys who get stranded on a deserted island. Now, the name of this popular book was A, Marooned Too Soon, B, Lord of the Flies, C, Temptation Island, or D, Stranded. If you said C, that's a nope. And that's a strong nope. Mm -mm. It's actually B. Lord of the Flies is a wild book about how nasty human nature gets without the ideas of guidance and rules. Not gonna lie, without parents, that island gets dark. Really, really dark. Because when it comes down to it, some of us love authority, and some of us think that it's a bad word. We were raised on rebellious rock and roll. You can't tell us what to do, we wanna rock. As you grow older, you might think that you deserve the benefits of an island with no rules, but I wanna give you a word of caution. God doesn't call us to call our own shots. We have to trust in his authority. And it's foolish to disregard his direction for our lives. It can be tough, it can be hard. I, I know that it can be. Nobody likes to just be told what to do all of the time. Let me give you some advice. If you have a hard time listening to God and trusted authority figures and then following what they say, think about it this way. Authority gives you a quest and at the end, is a solid reward. The trust to make your own decisions. See, the more that people see that you respect authority, the more authority you're given. A translation, if you participate in God's good guidance for your life, the more your world opens up. I'm the quiz man, goodbye! Uh, uh, uh. It's open world, help! We're gonna get through this. It's important to remember that authority- Oh, is I almost forgot. We're gonna do a challenge together. But we have a craft that you- No, we don't have crafts. We're not gonna do oh, crafts. No, no crafts. No crafts. Oh. We're gonna play the Guess My Rules Challenge. Here's how it goes. I have three rules that the cards must follow. You have three minutes to guess what those rules are. I'm gonna put the cards up there, and then I'll tell you if it follows my rules. If it's yes, then it stays. If it's no, it goes. As soon as you think you know a rule, shout it out. Are you ready to play? Let's play. All right, you have three minutes to do this. If you can't guess the rules before three minutes are up, 
then you don't win the game. If you guess and you beat me, then I don't know, maybe I have to eat something gross. If I win, you guys will eat something gross. Oh. <laughs> Ready? And start. A ace of hearts. Okay, oh, no, uh, heart, heart, spade, heart. Yes, it's heart, spade, heart. Uh, it looks like there's three. Oh, no, he's they're throwing three hearts apart. down too. Are they three apart? Uh, they can't really have a similar shape next to each other. Nine, four, eight, ten. Okay. Oh, oh. They're, they're going black and red, black and red. That is they have the to rules. be in a pattern. Two, three, king, queen. Uh. uh Ooh, um, divisible. The rule is that you are making this up as you go. You can nope. only have one king per row. You have to have nope. hearts. Believe in your heart. The hearts have to surround the royals. Nope. The um, same shape has oh, to surround the even? royal. Nope. Oh, uh. What's your final guess? Uh, that you cannot use fives. No fives is one of my rules. Nice. Ricky, do you know what that final rule is? Come on for the win, Ricky. And no sevens. No sevens is not one of my rules. Oh, come on, there's no sevens. Unfortunately, there are no diamonds up here either. When we come back, we'll see what they have to eat because they didn't guess my rules. You are the light of the world Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden and No one lights a lamp Puts it on the baskets where no one can see it Instead you take the lamp Put it on the stand where it gives light to everyone in the house story time. Okay, let me tell you a story about a time when I didn't let my good deeds shine through. So my parents were going out. They left me and my sisters home with our grandma. And before they left, they told us how to behave and specifically said, do not turn on the stove. Listen, we wanted to melt some chocolate. How are we supposed to melt chocolate if we couldn't touch the stove? Silly parents. So they leave. We pick a small pot, we pick the smallest burner, we put a solid chocolate cube in it, but nothing happened. We turn up the heat, but nothing happened. See, we were just gonna melt some chocolate, reenact the chocolate river scene from Lily Wonka, and then clean up the mess. We snap back to reality and <coughs> there's a kitchen full of smoke and the mega smell of burnt chocolate. Quick, scrape the pot, run some water, open the door, bam. Our mom's little pot, ruined. The fork we tried to scrape it with, ruined. Our little grandma, ruined. I mean, confused and upset and very disappointed in us. We were way too young to know how to clean up all the mess, and so the evidence of our disrespect just sat there, waiting for our parents' return. We could have burned our house down. Our parents weren't so silly anymore. Okay, so I wanted to tell you that story because looking back, here's what I learned. 
one, respecting authority can protect you from trouble. And you better believe we got in trouble. Two, respecting authority reminds you that someone cares about you. See, my parents weren't just trying to keep us from chocolate. They were trying to make sure we had a house to live in. And three, respecting authority removes the choice of too many options. Which burner, which pod, what to cook? Like we were making all kinds of way too big choices for how young we were. And four, respecting authority helps you earn more trust. You think my grandma or my parents let us quote unquote cook anything else for a while? Not a chance. And listen, side note, we don't want to just blindly trust anyone who says they're an authority. We're talking specifically about trusted authorities. See, Jesus didn't say, disrespect your parents' authority and your life will be great. No, instead, this is what Jesus says. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Jesus reminds us that trusting authority helps other people recognize who God is. So what'd you learn? Where is an area of your life that you can practice being better at respecting authority? These are some good cupcakes. They look good. They follow the rules and the recipe, and they're Funfetti. Oh, Funfetti, that's the best Do you kind. guys want some of these cupcakes? I do. Unfortunately, you didn't guess my rules. I so guess. these oh. are the cupcakes that you get to eat. What in the world? These cupcakes didn't follow the rules. Oh, We no. made these with the wrong direction. This looks like an eyeball, first there of all. There is an eyeball. I can tell that they once were Funfetti. Oh my gosh. Hard, Bare. just, just, mmm. This one I feel like was cooked oh. just the way it's supposed to be, like. Oh, it's so crunchy. Oh, no, it's crunchy. <laughs> uh, and it's purple inside. Yeah, oh. that's mostly salt. Oh, no. I think they mixed up the sugar with the salt. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my gosh, there is a block of salt inside this There's one. There's a block of salt? Wow. Yeah, or like a chunk. <laughs> it is a chunk of salt. Yeah. I'm gonna try with uh, just the edge with a little bit of that. That's so much salt. Yeah, so What's salt. with the salt on this show? That's it's so good. much. It's so dry. Oh my gosh, you're- Look how dry it is. Okay, so these cupcakes were made with salt, as you guys have pointed out. Um, not as many eggs as they were supposed to have. Cooked them a little longer than we were supposed to cook them. And uh, we didn't use any water, because that's what makes these nice and moist. It tastes like anger. An angry cupcake. Taylor, so I am not the boss. You are not the boss. Together, we are not the boss. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, a few years ago, I tried to build a present for my wife. I know, silly mistake, because I can't build anything. I tried to build her a bookshelf that we had ordered online, and literally all I had to do was follow the instructions and came with the box. In fact, here is the bookshelf, right there. There it is. Beautiful, right? The instructions told me to use a drill. And I thought, hey, you know what, I don't have a drill. I can probably just ram those screws in as hard as I can with things I find around the house. And so that's what I did. And I stood it up and I thought, man, this is beautiful. This bookshelf looks incredible. But the second we placed a book on one of those shelves, the whole thing came crashing down. It was a huge mistake. As you can see to this day, we still have like four things on there because we're afraid it's gonna collapse. Here's the thing. When it comes to construction, I do not need to be my own boss. If I am left, to be the boss of myself in that scenario, it's gonna come collapsing down, and in fact, it did. In the same way in our spiritual lives, we are not the boss. In fact, we submit to the boss, our God. This is even played out in Jesus' life. Jesus, walking around on earth, was probably one of the most famous people preaching the word of God, but he always submitted to his father, God. He always pointed people back to God. He pointed to his God and said, I wanted to have it your way, not my own. You are the boss, not me. So how can we live this out in our daily lives? When we submit to authority, when we point people back to God and say His will, not ours, we're pointing others to God as well. The way to follow God and to submit to His authority is saying your will, your way, not my own. 
I think we can all agree that respecting the guidance in our lives is worthwhile. When you trust God's authority in your life, your light shines out for all to see. So shine a light by appreciating authority. All right, so let's all say our sign off. I'm the quiz man, goodbye. Oh, we were thinking we were gonna do the one that we all usually say. Oh yeah, like yeah. The, okay, cool, yeah, I can do that. Okay, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. That's bye. good. Yeah, yeah bye. bye. <laughs> I'm gonna go high and we're bye. 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 Oh, you're gonna go high, yeah, I'm gonna go low. You're gonna go low. Bye. Go low. Bye. Respecting God's authority gives us guidance. Loop, let me pray for us. God, I thank you for this message. God, I thank you that your authority in our lives, that it keeps us safe, it protects us, it keeps us on the path towards you. God, I pray that we continue to listen to your voice and to listen to you in our lives so that we can follow the path in the direction that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus was the perfect example of keeping God the ultimate authority in his life. But maybe you're thinking, I haven't made God the ultimate authority in my life because I haven't even accepted a relationship with him yet. If that's you today, I want you to know that God loves you. So much so that he sent his one and only son down to earth to live a perfect life and to die a death on a cross for your sins and for mine. And those sins, those mess ups, those mistakes, Jesus defeated all of those when He rose from the grave three days later. We have that victory, we have that new life, but all we have to do is say yes to a relationship with Him. To say, yes, God, I want Your love. I want to be close to You, I want to know You. And then we can walk away from our sins and our old self and look towards Him. So if that's you today and you want to make that choice, I want you to raise your hand right now all across the globe. If that's you raising your hand, what I want you to know is that is the best decision that you could ever make. And so we wanna pray all together with you in support of you. So Luke, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, come into my life right now. Thank you for forgiving me. I turn from my sin and I turn towards you. Thank you for new life, now you have mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we celebrate with those who made that choice? If that was you, that is the best decision that you have ever made. And don't let it stop there. Tell your small group leader, tell your parent, we want to help walk you through this. Come on, let's give it up one more time for those making that choice. Right, before you guys go, I just want to let you know that we're going to be looking at Christmas in our programs next week. So make sure, you are, make sure you are here. We would love for you to get involved and get in, in the Christmas spirit right before we finish.